Fascinating. 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 <laughs> <laughs> it's a great character touch. I didn't come up with that. The writers handed me that. What a gift. Yeah. It's a great character touch. Yeah, well, and he's a fascinating character, so it's yeah. an appropriate word. Yeah. Fascinating. 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 <laughs> I do get to say it once in the movie. It's, it's complicated because I, I've always had trouble. Every time we come back to do Star Trek again, whether it's for uh, a movie or whatever, I've had, uh, I've had to go through a process with the, with the people that are making them, particularly if it's new, a new person, because not only there is there craftsmanship involved, but there's a certain amount of artistry involved. Mm -hmm. And if the shape isn't right, it gets me, it, it gets me crazy. I said, mm -hmm. that's, that's not the way it should look. How are these ones for you? I thought they were okay. Yeah. Uh, they worked. I thought mm -hmm. yours were very good. Yeah, I thought so too. Very Seamless. good. Seamless. I got jealous. <laughs> your ears, why were your ears better than mine? <laughs> well, the physical transformation in general, I think, is so key. Yeah. So important. I know I felt like in the morning, in it, you know, two hours or so when I was in the makeup chair, and as we'd get to the end of the process, it really felt like a, a kind of emergence. Yeah. of the character a little bit, you know. Yeah. Like I would come to work in the morning as my sleepy self and then over that two hours I really felt like something solidified. And I recognize that. Yeah. I recognize yeah, that. Freddie yeah. Phillips, who used to do my makeup on the early shows and the early films, used to say that about a halfway through he could see me getting into, oh, yeah. drifting into the character. Oh, yeah. And I could see it emerging in the mirror. Yeah, exactly. I'm sure Leonard could do it faster. Right, more experienced. But I would like to dispel the myth that was printed today in the New York Post <laughs> that I can't do this. Oh. So they say. Oh, really? That bastion of class and yeah. accuracy in the New York Post. <laughs> um, <laughs> Wrong. <laughs> um, so, yeah, probably Leonard has a little bit more of, uh, of the experience on the... I've been at it longer. Yeah, and he invented it. I mean, not invented it, but appropriated it, right? Every red carpet I've ever been on, we do the hand, <laughs> do the hand. <laughs> no, you guys, I'm not going to do it. Yeah. Leonard gave me an incredibly wide creative berth. There was no part of him that wanted uh, any proprietary connection to what I was doing with the character. He was really supportive in that way and available to me uh, in whatever way I needed him to be. But I felt like you were just supportive, you know, I would say. I never, I never felt that I, that I, that he needed me to say do this or don't do that, which is we talked very generally about the philosophy of Star Trek and, and the nature of the character. But he, you know, he's a trained actor and knows how to go about doing his job. We're very good friends. <clears throat> we see each other regularly, and I think he's okay about it. He was in one of the movies that I was not in. I think it was number seven, Star Trek Seven, the first of the Next Generation movies. And uh, I, I just accepted it as a, as a fact that the, the movie was really about his relationship with, with Patrick Stewart as Captain Picard, and I wasn't involved, and 18 years later, we come out even. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's, that's impossible. There's no way I could tell you. You remember the first thing you said to me, though, in the elevator, yeah, right? Yeah. When the elevator doors open and you said, you have no idea what you're in for, kid. And you're out the door. I said, Did I say that? Yeah. How yeah. presumptuous. <laughs> Did I call but you true. kid? <laughs> yeah, I think there was a kid at the end there, but that made it all the more endearing. Uh, I mean, it's true, though. You really can't. I mean, you could never describe that experience and no. the variations that exist within the experience of the fans. Uh, I mean, I'm just now starting to realize that. Just now. It's just the beginning. Yeah. Have they found out where you live? Shh. <laughs> but as we speak, I'm building, uh, I'm, I'm fortifying my, oh, yeah. my house. I'm building Good a idea. fence and a gate and Good security idea. and all <clears throat> things. Yeah. All things preventative. Boundaries, though both physical and personal, I think, are just a big part of going through something like this. Yeah, it's, it's complicated. It's very flattering, and at the same time, it can, it can be daunting. I remember one night driving off the lot after when we were making the series. And there were a group of fans at the gate, at the studio gate. And I, I, was, I was flattered that they wanted to be there and they wanted autographs and so forth. And then I drive away and I realize they're following me yeah, in the car. Yeah. So I think, well, I bet if I drive home, I'm going to lead them directly to my house. 
So I charged ahead and got through a couple of yellow lights, hoping that the, the red light would stop them. Pulled onto a, a street that I don't normally take, got into a, some strange person's driveway and sat for about 15 minutes, and then drove home. When I got to my house, they were there in front of my house waiting for me. Already when you got there? <laughs> 